<laughs> Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job, I work at Myrick O'Connell and I do, I do over in Westboro, and I do nothing but elder law. This is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in their life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Northborough, that means they want to stay right here. And so I have this terrific co-host, Liz Tridiak, who, wow, it seems like she's been here for quite a while now, is, is your Council on Aging director who came right at the beginning of COVID, right? And has, has been mm -hmm. meeting people virtually as well as in person um, because she brings on these great guests to talk to you. And these are two folks today from the organization that you absolutely just kind of like have to know about. These are folks from Bay Path Elder Services um, which we, we've talked about, um, but we, about these folks a lot before. Um, they, they are the regional entity that is charged with helping you as seniors make it through all of this, right? So Liz, uh, you want to introduce our guests and then we're just going to talk about whatever you want to talk about regarding kind of where we are. And then at the end, Liz, we want to save a few minutes just so that you can tell folks what's going on in the Senior Center right now, like in, you know, late, late September and October and we'll keep people up to date. Liz. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Arthur. Um, so I have two very extraordinary guests with us here today. Um, Doug Flynn, who's the Community Programs Manager at Bay Path Elder, Elder Services, and Julie Nowak, who is the LGBTQ Initiative Coordinator. I think I got that right, Julie. It's a little long. <laughs> the whole um, alphabet. <laughs> it is. It is. But it's great. Uh, Sounds like when I worked... a Scrabble word. LGBTQ coordinator. Yeah. Wait till you hear the program we have. It's even more letters, uh, but that's coming up at the end. So I, many years ago, used to work at Bay Path Elder Services, and Doug and Julie were actually my neighbors, and we sat near each other. So I've known them for quite a long time. They're fantastic. For anybody in Northboro who doesn't know about Bay Path Elder Services, um, they are an aging services access point. And that means um, that they are in charge of Northboro's home care services, information and referral services. It's all state and federally funded. Um, they can provide you with homemakers, personal care workers, information, caregiver support, LGBTQ support. Um, I won't ramble on, but I wanted to do two things with interviewing Doug and Julie here. Um, first, Doug, as a community programs manager, you do some pretty pretty exciting uh, programs with chronic disease, self-management, and caregiver support. So I wanted to ask you to talk about a little bit what's going on and what new programs are out there. And then I'll switch over to Julie. Okay, sure. So obviously, like uh, most places, we've had to make some adjustments over these last few months with the, the pandemic situation. We initially closed our office back in March and uh, we've slowly been opening back up, although we never stopped working. We all worked remotely throughout uh, this entire time. And now we have um, our receptionist back in the office. We have um, home care and uh, senior care options people in the office, as well as a senior manager and some supervisors. So there are humans you can actually call directly. And we also just uh, recently launched, a, as of this week, we just launched a new phone system so that all our calls that go to our offices, go directly to our computers now. So if we're working remotely, you, know, there's, you don't have to leave a voicemail and have us check the voicemail and everything you get. You can, and that's for everyone throughout the, the company. So you can get get directly to whatever you need to uh, without any sort of middle steps of checking messages or, or dealing with that. Um, all, all our programs are, are, are still up and running. There's obviously been adjustments, you know, Meals on Wheels, uh, initially, it was reduced to, to two days a week where they would deal, uh, deliver like three uh, shelf stable meals at each time. That's back up to the three days and that's going back, um, you know, that, that'll that be, you know, back to, to more of a, a normal delivery uh, trolley. Um, the programs you talked about um, in terms of the healthy, uh, healthy living programs, those have also gone virtual. And so we're doing the programs uh, primarily over Zoom. Um, so we have one starting actually this this week on uh, chronic disease self-management. Um, we have other programs on like uh, Matter of Balance, the, the Savvy Caregiver Program, which is uh, 
help when, uh, for people that uh, care, particularly with someone who's suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia. Uh, so that really is a great program that gets into really teaching you about, you know, the different behaviors, what causes those behaviors and how best to deal with them. Uh, it's a much more hands-on, really teaches you about uh, Alzheimer's and dementia and, and, and how, how best to, 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 to deal with it and what to expect as it progresses. Um, and there's a, there's a number of other ones. There's chronic pain management, uh, there's diabetes self-management, um, and, there's, there's, and I think there's probably a matter of balance if I didn't mention that one. There's, there's, a, there's a whole number of them, and they're all slowly um, being approved to be delivered virtually. Um, and there's also chronic, um, chronic uh, disease management. We also have what's called a toolkit, where we deliver the, you know, we will mail the book to the participants and then uh, it's a weekly conference call with our healthy Asian coordinator. So, uh, you know, that one's not actually face to face over Zoom. It's over the phone. Um, so it's a, another way we can can deliver that information to consumers. Um, and, you know, the great part about being able to do it over Zoom is that we can offer it to a wide range. We don't have to sort of anchor it at a particular place like a senior center or, you know, a adult day or someplace like that we can offer to people from all, any of our towns can all come in uh, over zoom the uh the negative is there are limitations in terms of who has the technology and teaching that technology although we will um there are ways we can assist if someone uh does not have um internet uh, access or or the uh, proper technology to get on we you know we do have um some state funding that we can tap into to try to help people get that and um, so it's it's limited, but we don't want to try to we try not to exclude anybody. Um, so those programs are exciting. We're getting those up and running. Um, we have both a toolkit and a and a chronic disease uh, Zoom class that are ongoing right now, and we're going to continue scheduling out more uh, for as long as we're stuck in this uh, Zoom limbo. <laughs> <laughs> but D Doug, I think you make an interesting point though that that while it is Zoom limbo, and in many ways it's just been painful. To, to some extent, it, it's it's helped kind of both in terms of being able to connect more consumers kind of across towns and also being able to connect them to more resources because you because you, now through Zoom, you're able to bring in people from all over, you know, who would, would might might have trouble getting to the senior center or whatever, you know, for a particular meeting. But but from Zoom can do it fairly can do it fairly efficiently. So so I was just wondering. Have you found that like attendance in these programs has has actually grown? You know, over the last over these months, as people have become accustomed to it. And then my other question was just going to be regarding this whole question of for folks who are having trouble figuring this out, that you can maybe able to help them figure them out. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Because I think a lot of people. Well, obviously, if they can't figure it out, that means they're not watching it. Oh, no, actually, actually, if they can't figure it out, they are watching this show. That's one of the nice things about this show is that, it, you know, as long as you can, you know, handle your, your little cable thing, right? You can, and I still, I'm old enough, I can still call it a thing, whatever the thing is. You, but but the goal is to get people to, to actually get get beyond that to some of these other services. Could, so could you just kind of speak to those those things? Sure. And, and what would be tactical? I believe my, my parents would tell you it's officially called a clicker. That, oh, that's, a clicker. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's, that's what we call the remote control in my house, at least growing up. I'll have to write that down in the back of my thing. So, um, so in terms of the the audience, it's been uh, the the goal and the hope is that eventually we'll be able to reach more people. So far, it's been a little slow going as trying to get the word out. Also, it took a while for the uh, we offer these programs through a contract with the Healthy Living Center of, of Excellence, which is run out of Merrimack Valley, um, which is another ASAP up on the North Shore. And it took a few months before they started approving these uh, evidence-based uh, programs to be done virtually, uh, because in the past they'd always been done, you know, in person in a classroom setting. Uh, so chronic disease was the first one that was approved, and now they have slowly been approving other ones. Um, I think uh, they, they've now approved Savvy Caregiver, so hopefully we'll get that up and running soon. I think that especially could be attractive to people online because you don't have to necessarily leave the person you're caring. You can stay at home and stay on in Zoom. And I mean, one of the issues with caregiver classes has always been, okay, if I come, you know, two hours a week for the for six weeks, 
what do I do with the person I'm caring for during that time? So it's, mm-hmm. that's, always, that's always a struggle. Uh, but now, you know, you can, you know, you can just, uh, you can do that, you know, from the next room and not necessarily have to worry about, you know, getting them to an adult day or bringing in someone else to take care of them and things like that. So uh, I, I hope, you know, I hope long, that this doesn't have to go on long term that we're in this situation, but I'm hoping that even when we get back to normal that uh, we'll be able to continue offering some things virtually just because I think there is an audience out there that we can reach. Yeah. So here at the Senior Center, we are talking to um, our residents pretty frequently, and I know Jocelyn and Outreach has been um, either talking up these programs, referring residents to them, because it's another way for people to make connections during this time because it's that's so lonely and isolating and if you're at home caring for a loved one and you're doing that 24 7 or the 36 hour day as they speak um it makes a world of difference to be able to connect to somebody else who's in that same situation as you and the same with the chronic disease self-management if you're dealing with diabetes or um a COPD on the long term, talking with somebody else who's also dealing with something chronic like that, it just, those connections are just so important. So yeah. Doug, how, other than referrals from the senior center, how do people, um, how do our Northboro seniors get into your classes? Well, the easiest way, if they're, if they're watching this show, is just to contact us directly. Um, so they can you know, either jump on our on our website, faithpath.org, and, and go to, you know, our services and healthy living, or they can uh, call or email. The best person to call is that Renee D'Agento is the healthy living coordinator, and her, uh, her direct phone number uh, is uh, 508-573-7214. So you can call her, and she can you know, tell you, give you all the details about the different classes we have and uh, when we're offering them. Um, and she's also available by, by email. It's our RD apostrophe ARG ENTO at baypath.org. Um, and Liz, I can supply that, that info to you later if you need to put it up on a, a graphic or something like that. And that's <laughs> easier for someone to try, try to remember. But uh, <laughs> we'll do that. That's you one know, of the and, nice things about these shows, too, because we can just put that as the banner. Our 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 terrific uh, producer, uh, Dana Volk, will will provide that so that people will really have all that information, which is great. Yeah, and we're also we're on Facebook. You know, the Bay, Bay Path uh, Facebook page has uh, all our events posted, including the uh, information about our healthy living classes. So that's another great way to connect. Um, so. Uh, we, and you know, Renee, uh, you know, right now a big part of her job is just trying to get the word out. She's not just with senior centers, but she's, you know, reaching out to, to churches, to uh, senior living communities, to you know, uh, rehab centers, and you know, just about anybody we can think of that uh, that might have people that would uh, benefit from these classes. So hmm. uh, that's you know, a big part of part of the, the, the her, her job is, is outreach right now. So. Uh, mm-hmm. If anyone, uh, anyone out there that either they or or knows someone who thinks they might benefit from one of these classes, you know, please, you know, get in touch with us. You know, we'd love to help you to connect you to, to one of these classes because they are evidence based programs that really do work and, and and do help people a lot. And and they're free. You know, remember yeah. these are for folks who are watching. These are your taxpayer dollars at work. You know, these this is this is. <laughs> So, so, you know, take advantage of these things. They're great things to take advantage of them. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Doug. Um, I think I'll switch gears now to Julie, who's been so patient. Um, so Julie is the... Well, but except that that's not a bad place to be hanging around, you know. I mean, oh, she's yeah. just sitting there, you know, looking out at the dock in the <laughs> province town, you know. This is what Zoom can do for you, you right. know. Mentally drifting in the harbor. <laughs> it's a happy place. That's very important. So Julie and I have been talking a lot lately. Um, she's been doing these really neat programs all some summer long on Zoom. Um, she's the, like I said in the beginning, I might have mumbled it up, but it's, you're the LGBTQ initiative coordinator. Yes. Close enough. Yep, there's a plus sign Um, in there for the entire alphabet is welcome. (laughs) 
us. I practice makes improvement. I'll keep saying it out loud and get better at that. Um, so we've been great. putting your wonderful programs in our newsletter and getting them out there. Um, but we were talking a little bit further in email and realized that October 11th is National Coming Out Day, right? Right. Right. So we wanted to do um, a program about LGBTQ and A so people can learn more about that if they've had a loved one come out and have questions. So I'm just going to hand it over to Julie and if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit more about National Coming Out Day and um, the programs that you're doing, uh, we'd love to hear more about it. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. So yes, October 11th is officially National Coming Out Day, but there's no timeline for coming out. Whenever you're ready, that's the right time for you. So if you're watching, particularly if you're a younger person and you're not ready yet, you're just where you need to be. We're here, we're listening, and we love you. And that goes for all the older folks watching too. We are here to connect with our rainbow community. I do lead our outreach to older lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender adults. And the eldest generations in particular tend to be deeply isolated and deeply wary of reaching out for health care and social services due to past mistreatment and abuse or just unhappy situations that they've endured. Remember, until 1973, homosexuality was classified as a mental illness and they could have been put into an institution against their will or suffered attempts to cure them, which is ineffective and harmful. Until 2012, gender identity disorder was on the books as a mental illness, then that got removed and replaced with the affirming and treatable diagnosis of gender dysphoria, where there are ways to make people feel more comfortable in their day-to-day -day lives and everyone can live authentically if it's a safe space for them to do so. So part of what we create is these safe spaces. And there are, in addition to the LGBTQ plus community, there's sofas, one of my favorite words. Sofas, you're all sofas, are significant others family, friends, and allies. Oh. So SOFAs are also welcome to our events. And this LGBT Q&A is particularly good for SOFAs, people who've had a loved one of any age come out, or maybe they themselves are questioning. Many of us ask ourselves many questions along our lives. Wherever you are in your journey, that's a good place to be right now. So what's an LGBT Q&A? It's just a space where I create a conversational setting and it's a safe space for people to ask questions using the words you have right now. Maybe you want to support a nephew who's come out or a niece who says, well, I'm non-binary, please use they, them pronouns when you're referring to me. I love you, but what does that mean? Why change the pronouns? What's important about that? How can I be more affirming? Where can I find answers? Where can I even ask the question? And that's why I created these Q and A's. I've been active with PFLAG for a decade now, which is parents, families, and friends of lesbians and gays. They also have the whole alphabet included and there are trans specific or trans focused chapters that are excellent as well. And that's another space where you can go and ask questions, you can order, pamphlets online or you can download them and have them for yourself or for your loved ones or for a grandparent in the family that talk about all of these issues in current plain affirming terms so that's what that's all about i love this idea julie because when we were emailing back and forth about it in my head i was um imagining you know there might be some seniors out there who have questions but i didn't even th think of the, the grandparents uh, out there or, or um, you know, they have extended family members who are bringing up these issues and or their, their grandparents or um, grandchildren, like you gave in the example, said, refer to me by these pronouns now. It's, it's, a, it's a whole new language and it can be scary to even know if it's okay to ask these questions. So coming up with the safe space was such a great idea of yours. And we love it. Thank you. 
I volunteered. It's okay to ask me. I don't have all the answers, but sometimes I'll learn with you, and that's great. And so we're doing our LGBT Q&A on October 26th at 11 a.m., and we're planning to do it on Zoom. So we'll, we'll have that information out. It's in our newsletter for October. And if anyone would like to sign up to get the Zoom link, they can contact us. Now, Julie, did you want to mention the other two um, ongoing Zoom programs that you have? I have three. Three? Um, yeah. So just about every week, thank you, we have our Pathways of Bay Path is the name of our rainbow programming. You can find us on Facebook. You can check in with us via email. And we have the coffee hour at 11 o'clock on almost every Tuesday, except the third Tuesday of the month at noon, we have our Pathways Cafe, which is a virtual version of our intergenerational rainbow community meal site. We used to hold it uh, in cooperation with the culinary arts program at Assabet Valley Regional Technical High School. And they would absolutely spoil us with very caring service and delicious food in their in-house cafe. And we really miss being there all together. So we're meeting virtually. Bring your own lunch or eat ice cream out of the bucket. But please come join us on the third Tuesday at noon at the Pathways Cafe on Zoom. And then we have a program we started uh, because people asked for it in June called the Dune Shack. And if you know the little Dune Shacks out near Provincetown, you will go and you paint your paintings and you write your novel and you just bask in the light and the solitude. So we so I created wonder who thought, I wonder space. who thought of this idea. I wonder who thought of, yeah. It was a group effort. Uh, they wanted, they said an art space would be nice to just work on everything from coloring books to home improvement projects to something I'm sketching or painting. And some people come just to chat and some people come just to listen and some people are actively making art and it's just turned into a really positive headspace for an hour every Thursday at 11. So we're keeping that going into fall. Boy, that's a ton of stuff. That's great. You can see why. Now, now, Deliz, do, do you sometimes miss all of the tremendous amount of excitement from being at Bay Path? You were at Bay Path for quite a while, right? I mean, that's... That, that's, yeah. that's one of the nice things is that it's just so big, you know, that there's all these programs. Right. Bay Path reaches every part of the community, and I, I definitely do miss it. And I miss the wonderful people I worked with there. But the great part is once you have worked with these folks, you're in touch with them all the time, even right. now. Like, I would never hesitate to ask Doug out for lunch or Julie, and I still talk with all my coworkers. There's just such a nice group of people. And I mean, you don't get into this type of work to make millions and, no. you know, you do it because you love it and you're a good caring person. Yeah, that's what that's what's fun about it. Now, Julie, yeah. but once again, I, 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 my, one of my jobs is to be the timekeeper here, so I have to be conscious of time. But I know that what we try to do at the end of the show, Liz, is, is to give you a, just a couple of minutes to talk about What's happening in Northboro? Because I know you know the show's being uh, will probably air you know later September you know in and so for what's so kind of what's coming? You were just you were mentioning this specifically this LGBTQ program. What else mm -hmm. is happening at the senior in and around the senior center? Okay, so coming up in the next two weeks or so, uh, we have our flu clinic on the Monday the twenty eighth from ten to twelve here at the senior center. Um, we have outdoor programming happening. We have three different yoga classes. We have trivia, dull men's group, photography club, book club, and the book swap every Friday, or um, puzzle swap, I'm sorry, every Friday morning um, between 9 and 11. We have two uh, meet the director, bring your own coffee, coffee hours here outside on October 5th and October 9th at 9.30, um, because I haven't met a lot of people in person yet. I've, I've, it's lonely up here and I wanna meet um, the residents. So please call and sign up for uh, a time to come have a cup of coffee with me outside. Bring your own coffee, bring your own cup, please. Um, and then we have um, some exciting lectures coming up. We have the Haunted History of New England, 
I'm going to tell everyone to check the newsletter for that and the website because I don't remember all the dates off the top of my head, but we have some fun October spooky things coming up. That's great. That's great. And, 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 and Julie and Doug, you can see that she likes her new, her current job. You know, she's obviously getting right. She's yeah. getting a charge out of this. Right. It's just a lot of fun. Right. Well, cause you get, you, you get to be doing so many things and I, I know Liz, you've been dying to really connect with more of the folks, you know, that's been yeah. one of the hard things is that you, you, you showed up after everybody left, you know, so yeah. to, to be connecting up. So Liz, thank you very much for, for once again, for thank putting you. this, to these wonderful people together. And thank you, thank you, Julie and Doug, you know, for being willing to do this, right? And Liz, thanks for the update. Folks, I hope you, we hope you enjoy these shows. Once again, we are, you know, we're very interested in your own feedback regarding folks that you want to see on these shows. We're now doing them twice a month. We want them to be connected to where you are and so and making sure that you know what's going on so that you, like Frank and Mary, can live happily ever after in Northboro. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you to our guests. Thank you very much, Liz. And folks, we will see you all on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Thank you. <laughs>